Hello and welcome to the Respond Customer Service webinar series happening the second Tuesday of every month. My name is Jeremy Johnson, a member of the TriTech marketing team, and I'm glad you've joined us here today. We have pre-recorded this month's webinar, so uh, just giving you a heads up on what's happening there. As far as other things that are happening in the EMS world, we do have our ongoing training programs happening across the country. So there's lots of different opportunities to network with other customers and to learn uh, some great hands-on tidbits on both the system and sort of the state of billing. We've got a couple more of those coming up here this summer, uh, June 19 to 20 in Charlotte, North Carolina, and July 11 to 12 in Albany, Oregon. So you can check those out or the other dates that are available on our website, the other dates and locations. We did pre-record today's webinar, so we won't be taking questions uh, through the, the GoTo dashboard as we typically do, but you can always email your questions into the support department. They would be more than happy to help you out. Our topic today is setting up charge codes, and we are excited to have Susan Kavaman, our EDI technical analyst, with us here today. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Susan. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to do an overview of charge codes. What are charge codes? So to get started, we would be in our sweet billing program and we're going to go to codes and charge. Uh, so basically, what are charge codes? Charge codes allow you to enter and save information regarding any items and or procedures for which patients, payers, trading partners may be billed. This code allows you to enter pricing, hit picks, taxes, and etc. for each charge. When entering the specific charges for each call, you will already have the necessary information collected and entered for that charge. The program will automatically know the price, the HIC pick, et cetera, for the charge and send the accurate data to the patient, payer, trading partner for payment. Therefore, you will not need to enter the specific details for each charge every time you enter a charge on a call as it will be saved in the form of a charge code. Required fields on the charge code are our charge ID, our charge description, and our default system ID. Starting out, a charge ID would be entered, and this allows you to enter a representation of the code. Instead of having to enter a lengthy description for each code, you have the option to enter a four-digit numeric code that will be used as the ID for a specific code. Thus, you could simply enter the ID in the charge fields during the data entry process of the call and having to remember and or locate the specific charge code. Oh, for example, instead of entering a lengthy description, an ALS base rate emergency, you could just simply enter ALS2 and enter your code description. Okay, so our next field is our charge description. And so here we just would enter our advanced, well, excuse me, everyone. Yeah, okay. I do apologize, it's my hand that's hitting my caps locks there and new laptop, sorry everyone. So we have entered our ID and what we want that charge ID to stand for, which is advanced life support. When I tab on that, it's going to populate the billing description. And then, you know, so basically you started out here saying that our charge code for ALS2 is advanced life support. So our next category that we would go to once our billing description is inputted would be to always prompt for a charge narrative. Now keep in mind that the charge narrative is different than the billing narrative. The charge narrative is going to appear on the charges tab edit screen for that particular charge. So if you're entering a J code or a miscellaneous medication or something that would need an NDC code, this may be a good idea to have this checked as when that HICPIC is entered from this charge ID, you would be prompted for that NDC code. 
now we come down to what we are going to charge for that uh, particular uh, service and we have our unit price. The unit price for the specific, specific charge, this is the price that is billed to the patient or trading partner when the charge code is applied to the call. So you can put in any amount here that is applicable. I'm just going to use 500 as an option and then you can also set an effective date to that and that would be the date in which the unit price became effective for that charge code. The previous field is only used if the unit price has changed. So, for example, if the beginning of, you know, 2014, it was $450, you want $500 to be effective as of 05-01-18, that date would be entered here. The editable field here on the right-hand side allows you to edit those unit prices when you are entering the charge ID on the call screen charges tab. So, you know, instead of having it be, you know, just $500 in there, if for some reason that needed to be changed when you're entering the code on the call, this editable field will allow that to happen for you. The unit cost is actually the cost accrued to your service. Now, a lot of people get confused with knowing what unit cost, furnace unit price is. So again, the unit price is what you are charging the trading partner or payer, you know, patient, patient for the service, you know, that you're providing for them. The unit cost is the actual cost to your service. This is uh, not the cost to the trading partner. So if you're charged 99 cents for, you know, a, a, a IV catheter, but you're charging $1.50 for it uh, when you are entering it on the call, this is one way for you to keep track of that and reports can be run off of these fields. Then you have your minimum quantity and your maximum quantity fields. So that's kind of a nice feature there that I don't really think a lot of people really use a lot. The charge rounding is, is where you can ask the system to round your uh, quantities up or down. So you just click, click the down arrow to choose the rounding scheme on the little little box here for the particular charge code. This scheme is used when rounding is needed for the calculation of the charge code. To note, CMS mileage rounding must be used for calls being submitted to Medicare with service dates on or after 1-1-2011. If you wish to use a different rounding method for non-Medicare payers, you need to create a second set of mileage charge codes to be used for those payers. Otherwise, everything will follow the CMS rounding as with Medicare. Rounding options are whole numbers. Whole numbers are, if it's uh, example mileage is 10.4, it's going to, to count as 10 when entered on the, on the call. Allowing tenths without rounding is going to be your 10.4 is or actually going to be 10.4 when entered on the call. Tense round 0 0.1 and above, for example, this is where your 10.4 would become 11. Tense round up 0 0.5 and above, this is where if it is 10.4, it will round to 10. CMS mileage rounding, using this option uh, follows the CMS requirement uh, mileage quantities to be billed to the tenth of a mile for calls with a date of service on or after January 1st, 2011. The CMS mileage rounding option will allow tenths for quantities under 100 miles and will 
automatically round up to the next whole number when fractional amounts above 100 miles are entered. So for example, if it is a 10.4 mileage trip, the quantity used by the program is 10.4. If it would be 101.4, the system would enter 102. Okay, now we're going to come over to our default system IDs. And the default system IDs basically let, this, let the system know what kind of charge you are entering, whether it is a base, mileage, ancillary, uh, time, extra attendant, uh, those types of things. So you would click the down arrow to choose the default system ID for the specific charge code. This ID is the group to which you consider the charge code belongs. The options in this field are universal throughout the program. Unfortunately, none of these can be changed, but the charge code must be assigned to a default system ID from the drop-down field. The program will then use this default system ID to lump numerous charges which have the same default system ID. So for example, if you had multiple miscellaneous uh, uh, service or actually what would be a better one miscellaneous charges on your ancillary uh, codes um, you would then understand that a lot of the uh, uh, instruction sets would take those ancillary charges and lump them together showing a quantity of accumulated quantity or a quantity of one, but then again, indicating the unit price as if there were three. So for example, if you had three different miscellaneous charges entered on one call, uh, an extra attendant charge, a night charge, and a waiting time charge that have the default system ID to set to miscellaneous services on each charge code, the system would lump these three charges into one miscellaneous service charge based on the default system ID of miscellaneous services and send that one charge code to the trading partner. Now, being that I'm a, a little familiar with how this works, um, again, going back, it can basically either, depending on the payer that this is being sent to, accumulate the quantity uh, and and set that price or just have a quantity of one. Alrighty, and then you would enter your HICPIC code. The effective date of that HICPIC code, if the HICPIC code had changed, uh, you know, from one code to another, it is always a good idea to enter the effective date here. This helps the system know the difference between when the code was entered into the system and the date that the code was actually created. Alternate HICPIC field is, is really not used very often. Uh, so we're just going to leave this field alone here. There is some logic that works behind here, but not necessary for the setting up of a charge code. Our next area would be the payer override. Now in the payer override is where you can set a payer ID and you would set the, the system default system ID and in this case, I'm just gonna put in base charge. Now if the HICPIC does not change for the payer from the original screen, there is no need to enter the HICPIC, only if it is different. And then the effective date would be, you know, I would suggest putting that in. If the HICPIC is the same as it is on the uh, front screen and all you're needing is a special modifier to go in here, then this would be the place to put it. Again, lots of times these special modifiers will override the location modifiers. Sometimes they're appended to the location modifiers in either the second or third modifier position. So the edit screen here is now letting us know that for Medicare, I want to add a GW modifier. Uh, there would be other situations that would probably uh, be 
you know, where the special modifier is needed, where the second modifier does not come into play. So, or to add like a third modifier along with other special things, maybe on a individual hick pick, not necessarily for all hick picks that you are entering on the call. And we are going to stop there because we have covered everything that we need to to actually set up a charge code. So today's uh, webinar was just about the overview and how to enter a charge code ID to be entered on a call. Thank you very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure to uh, go over this code with you.